Hi, this is Dr. Ram from Medmanus. Today we are going to talk about the adrenal glands. So in this session, we are going to study about the histology briefly and how the hormone is synthesized in the adrenal cortex. And in some other session, we'll talk about adrenal medulla and actions of aldosterone and the cortisol and how it is regulated. Okay. At the end of the session, you will be able to answer all the four questions okay we'll talk about the adrenal gland histology very briefly the innermost part of a gland we call it as medulla and the outermost is the cortex you know the medulla secretes catecholamines catecholamines like norepinephrine epinephrine etc we are not going to talk about this here we are going to talk about the cortex Okay, in the cortex, we have three layers, one, two, and three. And this layer is called glomerulosa. That is the outermost layer. And the innermost is called reticularis. And in the middle, we have fasciculata. Okay. And these three layers, are responsible for secretion of three different hormones the glomerulosa secretes mineralocorticoids we'll see about it now and glucocorticoids by fasciculata and adrenal androgens by reticularis now before going this into the synthesis of adrenal hormone just visualize the adrenal cortex to be like a yellow layers like this because you know you have a lot of cholesterol inside the cells. You have a lot of cholesterol inside the cells of adrenal cortex. Because this cholesterol is a precursor for all your steroids. Precursor for all the steroids. Very important. You know where does this cholesterol comes from? This cholesterol comes from or delivered by LDL low density lipoprotein very important and also from the de novo synthesis of acetyl CoA we have to see this in biochemistry sessions okay important cholesterol is a precursor for all your steroids the cholesterol is present in all the layers of adrenal cortex clear okay now I'm going to draw a flow chart to help you understand how different hormones are synthesized from the adrenal cortex so you know cholesterol is the precursor for all the steroid hormones this cholesterol is converted to a very common intermediate pregnenolone this pregnenolone is converted to some of intermediates finally to aldosterone and now this occurs in glomerulosa okay remember in glomerulosa layer we have three important enzymes very important enzymes three important enzymes one is 21 beta hydroxylase 11 beta hydroxylase and aldosterone synthase okay these are the three important enzymes what is that 21 beta hydroxylase 11 beta hydroxylase and aldosterone synthase with the help of these three enzymes, pregnenolone is converted to aldosterone. Okay, so this is a very powerful, very powerful, lot of powerful mineralocorticoid. This is very powerful mineralocorticoid. Aldosterone is a very powerful mineralocorticoid, which means there are some weak mineralocorticoids in the, as the intermediates. Okay, and pregnenolone is converted to progesterone progesterone okay and two common weak mineralocorticoid what is that deoxycorticosterone and corticosterone okay they are very weak weak mineralocorticoid which is a powerful mineralocorticoid aldosterone I will tell you the meaning of mineralocorticoid later in this session. And now, this occurs in glomerulosa. Okay, one very important enzyme I have left out here. 
the cholesterol is converted to pregnenolone with the help of enzyme desmolase 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 because we have some important regulations here in desmolase i'll tell you later and now this pregnenolone and progesterone in the fasciculus layer now we are talking about the fasciculata zona fasciculata in the fasciculata layer this pregnenolone progesterone is converted to hydroxy pregnenolone and hydroxy progesterone i'm going to tell you one very important enzyme here which is 17 alpha hydroxylase 17 alpha hydroxylase so this is present in fasciculata 21 and 11 present in glomerulosa do not confuse this and the hydroxy pregnolone and progesterone is converted to cortisol cortisol very powerful glucocorticoid okay, this is a very powerful glucocorticoid and uh, what is the intermediate here okay not very important but okay for completion sake deoxycortisol you also remember the same hormone 21 beta and 11 beta acts here 21 beta hydroxylase 11 beta hydroxylase acts in the fasciculata layer 21 beta and 11 beta what is the important same here 17 alpha good so this is in the fasciculata layer and now what happens in the reticularis i'm going to tell you about reticularis here what happens in reticularis very important enzyme present here what is the enzyme 17 20 lyase 17 20 lyase converts this to products into dihydroepiandrostenedione and androstenedione and these two are called adrenal androgens adrenal androgens because you know which is a powerful androgen in a human body is testosterone so these are all the weak androgens adrenal androgens are generally weak let me highlight this 1720 okay now understand in the glomerulosa you have three enzymes 21 beta 11 beta hydroxylase and aldosterone synthase and the fasciculator you have uh, three enzymes again one important enzyme is 17 alpha hydroxylase that is present in fasciculator and the reticularis remember 1720 lyase very important enzyme reticularis which produces your adrenal androgens so what we have seen the zona glomerulosa that secretes aldosterone zona fasciculata that secretes cortisol zona reticularis that secretes adrenal androgens and mineralocorticoids which means minerals the main action is on the minerals that is electrolytes electrolytes what is the powerful mineral aldosterone okay and the glucocorticoids glucose glucose so the main action will be on the glucose metabolism what is a powerful glucocorticoids cortisol cortisol now we are going to study the action of aldosterone and the cortisol so the actions of aldosterone aldosterone is one of a powerful mineralocorticoid minerals which means it alters the electrolytes of a body mainly the sodium and potassium sodium and the potassium so it increases sodium reabsorption acting mainly on the principal cells of a kidney tubules and also it increases water reabsorption so you know if sodium is reabsorbed due to the osmolar difference water follows okay so overall there will be hypernatremia and increased blood pressure 
and this point increases potassium secretions very important which means potassium is thrown out into the urine as well as your hydrogen ions into the urine so what happens if there is decrease in the potassium ions in our body it is hypokalemia and if you lose more hydrogen ions in the urine that means you retain more bicarb what is it called the state is called metabolic alkalosis so these are very important points and next the glucocorticoids cortisol so very important point about the cortisol is that it prepares your body to face any stress situation any stress situation the cortisol prepares your body to face it how by increasing the blood glucose level increasing the blood glucose level how the blood glucose increases number one insulin resistance so there will be increase in the glucose in the serum and number two is gluconeogenesis which means glucose production in the liver increases so glucose increases in the serum and these two points it's very easy to understand protein mobilization because you know from amino acids we can produce glucose biochemistry and fat mobilization which means the fatty acid we can produce glucose am i right and decreased inflammation that is it decreases your immunity so these are the five important actions of glucocorticoids just remember this point increase glucose level in the blood you will get all these points clear what is the regulation of adrenal hormones in my whiteboard okay so this is your hypothalamus i'm drawing anterior pituitary and your adrenal glands okay so the hypothalamus secretes corticotrophin releasing hormone that stimulates the anterior pituitary to release ad adrenocorticotrophic hormone acth that acts on the adrenal glands and stimulates all the hormones but especially there is more cortisol more cortisol when acth stimulates adrenal glands and aldosterone and androgens also will be high but more cortisol and now this cortisol gives feedback mechanism negative feedback mechanism to acth i mean it uh, gives negative feedback to the antipituitary to decrease the secretion of acth and also acts on the hypothalamus to decrease the corticotrophin releasing hormone very important to understand this chart because we have lot of pathology and we have lot of diagnostic tools based on this concept now a question to you acth adrenocorticotrophic hormone which is released from the anterior pituitary acts on a specific enzyme in the adrenal glands what is the name of that enzyme this is the first question the second question angiotensin 2 we have already seen great detail in our renin angiotensin aldosterone system in a previous session take a look at it this angiotensin 2 has its influence on an enzyme in our flow chart we mentioned that is this angiotensin 2 has its influence on the adrenal cortical enzyme what is the name of that enzyme okay put it in the comment section i will get back to you with more adrenal pathology make sure that you know that flow chart that is the synthesis of adrenal cortical hormones and make sure that you know the regulation and i will post more questions on instagram.com slash med underscore madness and facebook.com slash med madness thank you see you with more interesting videos